Su, el tercero en la superficie, su referee, el experimentado Juan Morales Lee. Prepárense para cuatro rounds de combate en la categoría de peso Super Pluma. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for four rounds of boxing in the Super Featherweight Division. Introducing the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim. He officially weighs in at 130 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo color negro con oro, con un peso de 130 libras. He stands with 11 professional bouts. Tiene 11 combates profesionales de Tijuana, Baja California. Federico Rodríguez. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner, wearing black and white. He is the official weight, 132 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color negro con blanco, con un peso de 132 libras. He stands with a professional record of six wins against three losses. Cuenta con un record profesional de seis victorias por tres derrotas. Representing Stockton, California, USA. Giovanni Gonzalez. Right away, please. And here is what the final instructions. Dando las indicaciones finales, su referee Juan Morales D. Cuatro saltos. Aquí conmigo, saben las reglas, llévenlas a cabo. Mucho cuidado con la cabeza, no rabbit points, no riñones, no bajo el cinturón, no golpes de revés, ni con el hombro. Dense la mano, que gane mejor. Fuerte para los dos. Here we go, round number one, super featherweights in action. Four rounds as we're seeing Giovanni Gonzalez with a record of six and three from Sacramento, California, taking on Federico Rodriguez. So we see Gonzalez in the black shorts landing a two-piece combination. Rodriguez, the black shorts with yellow trim. Awkward little style there, Chris. Yeah, that absolutely. Federico Marcos. has, yeah. Very herky jerky. Seems like he balances a little bit off. Seeing him wearing a knee pad could be because of uh, that movement that he that yeah, he creates. He might have come in here with an injury. Just a little shimmy step there, though. And in my opinion, it's a it's a poor man's version of. My good friend, uh, MMA fighter, former UFC champion, Dominic Cruz. Yeah, very, very poor man's version of Dom. Yeah. Gonzalez pressuring forward, doing a good job of cutting the ring off. Six series of punches there from Gonzalez as he has. Rodriguez trapped against the ropes. Rodriguez able to move out of the, the way there of those punches. And Rodriguez responded well to as um, as he was getting hit, he was throwing back. Gets caught there with a punch. Pong that jab out there. As he lands a punch there, Kevin. He is awkward, but he is able to move out of the way of, of some of these punches. Shot to the body there by Giovanni Gonzalez. It's been all him so far in this round as he tries to trap. Rodriguez against the ropes. Referee motioning for a break. We're coming down to the last 20 seconds of this round, number one. It would serve Gonzalez to go to the body like he just did there um, because he keeps moving his head, does Rodriguez. So he's, it's going to be hard 
to hit somebody that doesn't want to get hit in the head. So go to the body. As round number one is now in the books, this is Marcos Villegas calling the action here ringside with my broadcast partners, Kevin Otley and Chris Martin. Kevin, give me your assess assessment of that round number one. Yeah, uh, Gonzalez was definitely in control of the fight. He just pressed the action. Uh, Rodriguez, he was just being a little too defensive for Mates, and um, I definitely got Gonzalez uh, one, one zip right now. So we take a look at the action from now round number one. We see here Gonzalez pawing that jab, setting up a body shot, lands a two-piece there, follows it up with a series of combinations, but Rodriguez able to fire back, Chris. Yeah, Marcos, um, Rodriguez, a little game. Uh, seems to be a little bit outpowered, but uh, he's game. We begin round number two, Giovanni Gonzalez repping Sacramento. Federico Rodriguez, a hometown kid here from Tijuana, Baja California. Gonzalez coming out with a lot more power. Yeah, maybe he saw something in that round number one. Or maybe he feels that he can overpower the much smaller Federico Rodriguez. Rodriguez has got to be a little bit more uh, aggressive. He's, he's just waiting too long to throw a punch. Feel almost in a way as Gonzalez misses a two punch combination there that he's trying to time him with the big overhand. Yeah. Because Rodriguez has that lazy jab. He keeps it down and I just keep thinking that he's trying to time him to shoot it overhand. There we go, we just saw right there. And I think it's the fact, Marcos, that Gonzalez knows he's that much stronger than Rodriguez. He's just trying to come forward, power through everything. Um, and maybe he needs to be a little bit more schooled and no. take his take his time and use a jab and, and set up his shots and, and, and simply just try to knock him out. I think a, a double jab would serve him well. Though uh, Federico Rodriguez landing a series of punches there. For how awkward the kid is, he's not doing that bad in there. No, you know, Gonzalez, his fundamentals isn't all the way there, quite honestly. So he leaves himself open to, like, little little pop shots that Arias is catching them when they're throwing them off balance. Yeah, he's very herky-jerky. And sometimes those herky-jerky guys, they just got such odd timing that they're yeah. able to hit you with these punches that you don't see. So he checks Gonzalez there with a the little hook. Yeah. <clears throat> Rodriguez is actually... He's actually able to see these shots from Gonzalez. Um, he's got he's got a good vision in there inside of the boxing room. Yeah, I agree with that. You could he definitely is seeing the punches. And hope now he's being more offensive, which is good. Yeah, he, he's in a good moment right now. He's a little bit of a momentum switch now. Looks like a, Gonzalez is a little <laughs> a little tired, I think. Yeah, Federico Rodriguez landing a stiff jab there. Tides seem to be changing as. Both fighters exchanging right now. And that awkwardness is, is bothering Giovanni Gonzalez. It's just very awkward. It's not it's not the type of style you see in the gym very often. Rodriguez <laughs> reminds me of like a kid on a, a, a math team who he just he just had enough. He's like, I'm giving it my all, man. So we're coming down to the last seconds of round number two. Rodriguez eating a series of punches there from Giovanni Gonzalez, but I don't know, that round was a good round for him. He might have stolen it, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, the last, I would say, 45 seconds was all him completely, and um, it's a, that's a tough one to judge. Uh, I still would probably give that, uh, that one to Gonzalez as well. He seemed to be a little bit more busy for the most part, but I mean, it's definitely more tough. Well, I disagree on that one. Um, Kevin, I think uh, Rodriguez did a little more and what we remember more in that round is a little flurries from Federico Rodriguez. So as of right now, 1-1. One, one. I'm gonna go ahead and make a correction. On our bout sheet it says Giovanni Gonzalez is from Sacramento. 
but he's actually from Stockton, California. We are listening to you guys on our live chat. Thank you for uh, that correction. Uh, Stockton, California, repping tonight. Giovanni Gonzalez, as we're seeing highlights from round number two. As we now begin round number three, Stockton known as a, a city that has a lot of fighting heart. Fighters such as the Diaz brothers, yeah, Gabriel Yeah, absolutely. Fuller. That's exactly what I thought of. Yeah, uh, Gabe Flores Jr., who signed with Top Rank as well, repping Stockton. So a lot of talent coming from that area of California. With the patented Stockton slap. <laughs> it's always a good time when you see the Stockton slap occur <laughs> in action. How angry would that make you as a fighter if you get hit with a slap? <laughs> with the Stockton slap, oh, man. Even, good that's body even shot worse. there, though, by that was, Yeah, that definitely wasn't a slap by Gonzalez. Yeah, that was, was, was a thud. Yeah. But, oh. He gets checked there by check hook. Federico Rodriguez. Series of punches there. Not making this easy for Giovanni Gonzalez. You could tell that Gonzalez feels stronger than him by the way he's walking through his punches. But Rodriguez is in the fight. He's, he's landing shots and making it uncomfortable for Gonzalez. Yeah, Federico Rodriguez, an 11 fight veteran. Not too many more fights than Giovanni Gonzalez, but that experience at this point is showing as well as his, his awkwardness. It's been difficult for Gonzalez to really pin him in one corner and really let his arsenal go. He's missed a lot of punches so far over the series of these three rounds. Yeah, and that's due to uh, Rodriguez being able to uh, make him miss. It's a big right hand. Yeah, it looks like Gonzalez is finding his range a little bit more. And right when we say that, Federico Rodriguez lands a big punch. Now, what's the key, Kevin, to fighting herky-jerky, awkward type fighters? Just honestly keeping a distance. Uh, and um, also just be, your timing has to be immaculate. It has to be pinpoint and exact, you know, for fighting guys, fighters like that. Because you'll never know, you know. So unless you uh, uh, keep your distance, come in when you need to, and bounce right back out, he'll always hit you with a shot that you won't see coming. All right, Kevin. So, so I'd like to I'd like to disagree with with what your choice of of the style to beat this kind of style is. Simply smother him, come forward, pressure, and stay close. Don't let don't let him angle out on you. And kind of kind of like uh, Gonzalez is doing right now. What well, seems uh, Gonzalez doing work to the body? It's really affecting Federico Rodriguez. He's coming to the end of round number three, you can see. It is having an effect on him. He has been slowing down little by little. This is a four round fight as we come now to round number four. So take a look back at some action here. Gonzalez Giovanni Gonzalez was able on to, the attack. He was able to land uh, good body shots in that round. I think uh, it, play, it paid off. Yeah, Gonzalez. but we see uh, Federico Rodriguez yeah. answering back. Yeah, it was a good exchange between both fighters just now. Good action there in round number three. I think uh, Gonzalez was able to take over a little bit more in this round uh, than he did in the in the previous round. Um, a little inactivity from Rodriguez. Vamos I think those body shots are starting to Round number four, el último round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number four, your final round. Dame más volumen, sonido por favor. Final round here with our opening fight. Giovanni Gonzalez repping the 209, looking for the seventh win of his pro career. Looking to see if he could get a solid finish in this round number four. The fight could be all his, or it could be 2-1 at this point. So he does need to finish this round strong to leave no doubt in the judges' scorecards. But he has been the one that's been pressing forward. He sneaks in an uppercut, lands a hook. As he continues to pressure it forward towards Federico Rodriguez. Hey, hey. Oh, 
referee motioning a warning. Swing and a miss there from Federico Rodriguez. Almost lost his balance. He gets clipped by a hook. Yeah, Gonzalez is he's just going to stay on the gas for this entire round because he sees that, you know what, man, this is the last round. I know I have to win this round regardless. So he's just giving it all right now. But Gonzalez has been trying to time that uppercut. He's been unsuccessful at this point. But you know, it, it's something that he wants to land as he switches to southpaw now. What does that tell you, Chris, when a fighter switches their stance? Well, it depends. Um, sometimes they're in control. And at this point, though, um, I think that's what it, what it is. You know, is he feels like he's in control. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, kind of playing with uh, Rodriguez. Now, Rodriguez looks tired. Eats a big punch oh, there to the nice body. Nice to the body. Yeah, good body trap. Giovanni Gonzalez following it up now. It's easy to say that that's what he needed to do from the beginning, but maybe that's just not what he saw, wasn't able to do. Um, but that, those, those have been two good body shots in the last few seconds. He continues to work that area. Rodriguez not able to cover up with some of these clips. Gonzalez, though, just moments ago with the hook. He's having a real hard time now. I think he felt it. He keeps going Oh, there he goes. Down, down he goes from body shot. Made the count. He made the count, but it doesn't 20 seem 20 seconds like left in this round number four. Let's see if Giovanni Gonzalez can finish the fight. Time is working against him. Let's see if he can get this finish. Yes. We come to 10 seconds now. Both fighters exchanging in the pocket. Good strong uh, finish from Giovanni ended. Gonzalez, but he couldn't put him away. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he got up, uh, Rodriguez, and, you know, he said, I want to finish this fight. You know, there's no way I'm going out <laughs> as getting knocked out. So that was good for him. Yeah, way to tough it out for uh, Federico Rodriguez. Um, Giovanni, Giovanni Gonzalez did what he had to do. Um, he put his shots together. They started coming, in, uh, coming together at the end. Beautiful body shots that he landed. Wasn't able to put away Federico Rodriguez. Well, that knockdown more than secured the win, I feel, for Giovanni Gonzalez, who should move to seven and three. As we take a look now at some action from earlier in the fight. Big shots being landed there by Giovanni Gonzalez. That body shot there. Yeah. Physically moving Federico Rodriguez. So he tries to give himself space, tries to hug. He's trying to get Giovanni Gonzalez off of him. And those were two good body shots, Marcos, that he kept throwing. So we now take it to Pablo Flores to hear the judge's decision and see who won this fight. Damas y caballeros, después de cuatro rounds de combate, tenemos la decisión de los jueces. After four rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. El juez, judge, Max Zúñiga la bandera, he scores it 39 to 36, 39-36. Y los dos jueces, Iván Velasco y Francisco Pacheco, tienen las mismas tarjetas, 40-35. These two last judges have the same scores of 40 to 35. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su ganador por la vía de la decisión unánime. Stockton, California. Giovanni Gonzalez. 209, stand up. Giovanni Gonzalez getting the unanimous decision here at the Big Punch Arena in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, improving his record now to 7-3 as both fighters embrace. You mentioned Kevin Federico looking like that kid on your math team or something. 
Dude got braces on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was like a little kid. Yeah, he probably got a chess conference after this, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, but it is what it is. You know, the, the legal age to fight here in Mexico, I believe, is 15, so. Yeah.